What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Hey, guys. Welcome into another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. And we are excited uh, to be back giving you guys some content. But we're not so excited about the news uh, we're going to talk about the Julio J the Julio Jones trade details here. Before we get into it, make sure to go check us out. Uh, you know, give us a give us a like, hit the subscribe button, check us out on Newsbreak anywhere. Um, you know, you have social media or or anywhere you listen to your podcast. But Julio Jones is now a Tennessee Titan, Glenn. Uh, yes. How are you? I mean, well, let's start with the details of the deal. Um, okay. do, do, do you have those in front of you? Yeah, so the Titans give up a, a second rounder in the upcoming 2022 draft and a fourth rounder in the following year, the 2023 draft, in exchange for Julio Jones and a 2023 sixth round pick. Uh, so not the first round compensation that I heard was floating out there. They said there was a team. Well, obviously that's not true. There was right. probably no team offering a first because even if it was a a team in the NFC, I think if they were offered a first, they they jump all over that and they take the first rather than a second and a four uh, the following year. Uh, but, yeah, the, Jimmy, initially when we started talking about this and, and if the Ravens – we were taking the Ravens out of it, we said, what team would you least like to see Julio be traded to? And we both agreed it was the Tennessee Titans. Obviously, the, the rivalry between the Ravens and Titans has been reignited as of late and – uh, been a little bit of bad blood between the two teams as well as the fan base is really mixing it up. So, uh, yeah, here, here's the, the compensation here. Um, so you can see the Titans are taking on a whopper of a salary, which is fully guaranteed, and, and the, the Falcons were able to get out of that salary but still have a decent amount of dead money for the next three years mm -hmm. uh, in 7.75. And I think it's – isn't it consistent? I'm pretty sure it's consistent throughout the next couple of years. That that 775 isn't going down, if I remember. It's $5 million in signing and two two point seven five in in bonuses. So still a, a lot to take in one. But nonetheless, I'm sure Titans fans have got to be thrilled, right? Yeah, they've got to be excited, certainly for the short term. Uh, yes and no in that, you know, I think that – look, I'm partial to the Ravens, but the Ravens certainly, I think, objectively have a much more complete roster. Mm -hmm. So to me – uh, you know, you're eating up salary cap. The, Julio Jones is still has the most guaranteed money, uh, as we showed. Uh, I think the last video we did on Julio Jones, as far as remaining guaranteed money on on their contract for any wide receiver in the NFL, it's sixty four million dollars in guaranteed money. So it's not just the fifteen this year, but you know, the, this year and the next two years, it's all guaranteed. You know, as far as his salary goes, that sixty four million dollar uh, piece of it. And so they're taking up more of their salary cap to to add to this explosive offense. They're going to have to pay, um, you know, his counterpart uh, here here shortly. How am I forgetting this guy's name? AJ Brown. Yep. AJ Brown. There, I, I wanted to say Green, um, but exactly, and AJ Brown, who we know is one heck of a receiver himself, uh, and and their defense is not any better. Their top, their their starting three corners are all gone off the team. Uh, so. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't know if it's a net plus. I mean, I guess it has to be a net plus. You're adding a hall of famer at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Right. Yep. Yep. But there's still, I mean, I don't know what's left in the coffers to improve that defense. So I don't know how I feel about this team. If the Ravens were, were going to get him in that we're more, we're a more complete team. Mm -hmm. I think it, it would have been more of a net gain for us because we have a solid defense. But man, that defense over there in Tennessee is just miserable, and it doesn't look like anyone's coming there. You know, they don't have any reinforcements uh, showing up. Yeah, the defense is still struggling. But let's remember the Ravens. You know, it's not like the Ravens handled them and destroyed them. I mean, it was right. a good game. Uh, it, it was a game that it, at one point could could have gone either way. Uh, and that's an offense in which you know it, they had Corey Davis on there, and now they're going to have Julio Jones out there. So I think that. It's definitely an upgrade at that position. Now they still lost John U. Smith, talented tight end who was had his breakout year last year, signed a monster contract with the Patriots. So and they lost their OC. They lost their OC, Arthur Smith. Yep, he's the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons now. And they promoted within. They promoted their their tight end coach. Uh, I, I, I'm blanking on his name. I just had it, uh, but I, I can't seem to find it. But yeah, they so they promoted within. So theoretically, at least, it looks like they're going to be keeping. 
uh, if not the entire offense, a very similar offensive system than they had last year. So it's still primarily a run first offense. And yeah, and you know, they got still have Derrick Henry in the backfield who just ran for over 2000 yards. So you're still going to, you know, make that the primary source of your attack. But when you consider their, their play action game with, with Ryan Tannehill at the helm and, and the threat that Derrick Henry brings out of the backfield was already tough, already devastating. Now you got AJ Brown on one side and Julio opposite. Yep. And and look, their tight end is still, Anthony Ferks are still a pretty talented tight end. They lost Janu, but they still got Anthony who filled in nicely when he was out and and really played, played well all year, catching 39 balls for him. They, uh, they, if they can't stop you, Jimbo, they might just look to outscore you. Right. Absolutely. I mean, this offense certainly is going to be explosive because just like you, you, uh, articulated, they were already an explosive offense. And at the end of the day, you're adding a hall of famer and your left tackles coming back. Mm -hmm. Um, but certainly I, I don't know. I mean, I was not surprised. I was not excited when the news broke. I was, I also wasn't surprised. How did you feel when it happened in con in, in the context of the Ravens, like not playing against them, but the Ravens not getting him right. Like, were you disappointed? Were you sad? Were you surprised? Were you like, yeah, I already kind of knew it wasn't going to happen. Where, where did your emotions go when you saw that it wasn't to the Ravens that it can finally be put to rest? Yeah, no surprise there. I, w- I always considered the Ravens a long shot. I was, I mean, I was hopeful it would have been cool to see Julio come to the Ravens, but never put the the percentages higher. I think than twenty. I think twenty was the highest uh, I ever uh, put a percent on. But you know, so it's it's it doesn't shock me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, not happy that they're ta- going that he's going to a Titans team that has been a consistent playoff uh, matchup for the Ravens as of late, and there's no reason to expect them to not be in the same position. They went 11 and five last year. Um, now the Colts matched that with 11 and five and, and man, you talk about a lot of turnover on a team, the Colts, you know, who knows how they're going to perform. I think that if you look at the ceiling and the floor, it's, it's a pretty wide gap there when you talk about Carson Wentz and what he could bring potentially and what, you know, he, he, he could do to them as in, in a bad way. The opposite. Yeah, lead the league so, in picks at the same time, right? He could be yeah. his last time with that coach when they were in Philly or, yep you know, be throwing passes like he was last year. Exactly. And then, now the t- the Texans, I don't anticipate them competing much for that division. Uh, I don't think anyone does. And then the Jaguars, while they, they did a lot of changes, a lot of improvements, I think they're still a far way away from competing for the division. So the Titans look like they're in a good spot to, to yeah. take the AFC South unless Carson Wentz returns to form, which then it's a whole nother ball game and they'll be fighting for wild card uh, and division with the Colts. But Man, nonetheless, I, I would not be shocked at all to see the Ravens have to go to Tennessee. I mean, right. have to, or the Tennessee Titans to come to Baltimore and play in the big crab cake. And then, man, you're going to test them corners. We we love our secondary. We know how talented they are and how deep we are in that secondary. But we also saw what A.J. Brown did in the first half to Marlon Humphrey. Now, Marlon Humphrey bounced back and shut, the, shut him down in the second half. But, man, it's going to be awfully hard to shut down A.J. Brown when you got to worry about Julio uh, Jones on the other side. It's giving me a headache already just to think about. That's why I feel like I'm already trying to, like, downplay it in my mind and say, well, their defense is still Swiss cheese or still, you know, yeah, Swiss cheese or whatever the case may be because I'm trying to, like, make myself feel better about this, this you know, predicament that teams are going to be in and, and potentially the Ravens when it all counts in the playoffs and having to stop Derrick Henry – Julio Jones and AJ Brown. Like mm. that's just, that's just, you know, nerve wracking to me, certainly. But I, I also, at the same time, this is just more than anything in, in defensive. This is trying to help myself feel better. Once it's self therapy at the same time, think about the pressure that Lamar puts on, was going to put on a team like Tennessee, oh, yeah. when he makes your safety looks like he's standing in a bucket of cement, right? Yep. Like, and their whole job is to, is to touch him and he can't even get his hands on him. So certainly um, we do that as well. But uh yeah, I mean, it's, look, they were 31st in pa- giving up passing touchdowns. Right. They gave up 36 passing touchdowns last year. They were 29th in giving up yards, 4,400 yards passing last year. Their defense is trash, and it's going to continue yeah. to be uh, until Vrabel can figure things out because they lost, like you mentioned, Adore Jackson's gone. They lost Malcolm Butler. I mean, I don't know who is going to be uh, you know, defending the pass this year, And uh, but I guess they lost what are you Clown, losing when you're 31st? Didn't... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But still, like you said, if they're not outscoring you, Jimbo, they got they're, problems. They're going to have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Or if Tannehill turns it over a couple times, mm-hmm. yep. which, you know, in the past two years, he hasn't really done a ton. 
But you know, if if he can, you know, if he turns it over a couple times, then then you know you can't really depend on that defense to to give you one back uh, too often. But the other thing I wanted to uh, I want I wanted to touch on here is you know we've talked about th- this matchup, but what about the the Ravens? And so are you're feeling good about our young guys moving forward as far as wide receiver core? And then also we have some money there now. Are you? I mean, I feel like you were kind of already there, uh, but what are you expecting us to do with this money? Are you all in on hopefully getting one, if not two pass rushers of the guys that are remaining on the market? Yeah, absolutely. I'm still holding out hope for yeah. Justin Houston. Yeah. And I wouldn't, you know, although I think that the Colts have the the edge on getting Zach Ertz because of the former coach uh, being over there in Indy. Now I still wouldn't put that, you know, out, out of the realm of possibility. I think it's still a chance they could add to that area of the offense. And the bills of course made that move as well and they're looking apparently to make a push for yeah, Zach Ertz. Yeah, clearing out some space and and they could they could absolutely get him. Uh but yeah, I'm hopeful still to me the number one need on the team is pass rush. It, yeah. It's not wide receiver especially after they added more than even we could have expected in the draft. Uh so yeah, I think it's already a crowded room but man, it'd be nice to see a veteran pass rusher added to this added to this team, no doubt. Well, maybe it ends up being just like uh I don't even know who the the who wrote who the composer of the song is, but you don't always get what you want, you get what you need, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, look, it might end up being one of those situations where the Ravens we don't we didn't get Julio Jones and maybe we wanted Julio, but we mm-hmm. get what we need in in a solid pass rusher or hopefully two. Cuz the way that Eric DaCosta, you know, he's mentioned it before in his pressers, he sees free agency all the way up until August. Right, and so that's a, a much longer time than. than yeah, look for uh, some. Vet. There could be still some surprising cuts. You know, you never know. It depends on how young guys are performing at camp. They might see some areas where they could cut some some expensive guys and replace them with cheap talent. Yeah, for sure. So I I agree with you there. I think they're going to go head first on 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 the pass rush uh, department, and I'm still excited about the depth overall. The depth of wide receiver that the Ravens have is still uh, pretty impressive at this point. Uh, when you're mm-hmm. talking about volume of guys that have potential and have been proven, it, it, you know, I, I think that we can still really do something, even if you know we didn't add a guy like Julio. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And look, there's still the chance. I know that if you look at actually, if you look at Julio, the perception is he's had injury problems, but really, if you look at the numbers, he hasn't missed a ton of games. Last year, by far the the, the biggest miss since 2013, when he missed uh, a whole bunch. I think he missed 11 in 2013. But outside of that really able to get on the field. Now he might miss some practice, but he makes it on game day. So maybe there's that, 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 that uh, could make fans of uh, Ravens and other fans around the league. that were hopeful to add him. It, he could get bit by that injury bug it is yet getting that time of his career where if you start having nagging injuries, they do take longer to heal. So that could be the saving grace. But if not, if he plays all 16 Jimbo and AJ does as well, it's going to be a, a scary season for the AFC uh, opponents, no doubt. Certainly, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're interested in, in hearing your guys' thoughts as well. We're here for all of it. Let us know what your thoughts are. Are you disappointed? We know some of our commenters in the, li- in the last live session we did were all about getting Julio, while others, you know, it's hot and cold, really believed that there was no way they were doing it. Where are you? What do you think the Ravens should do with their ret- remaining cap money? Give us all your thoughts. Leave your comments below, and we'll talk to you guys soon.